full disclosure, yesterday I drank alcohol. It was a, a cute little fruity drink. And normally I don't really like alcohol, but I liked this one. And I didn't drink that much of it, but it did something, like it, it seemed to lessen. Maybe it was just placebo effect, but like I felt like I was not as anxious and I was a little more talkative, <laughs> a little more outgoing than I have been. And I liked it. And then I ended up getting really sleepy and like crashing and I can't remember the night because I slept through it and then anytime I, I would wake up to use the bathroom. Between that I was like, it just was like a zombie so, so tired. So I would like wake up barely to use the bathroom again, fall asleep. I didn't know what time it was. I didn't know how long I had been sleeping for. I just found myself craving it again and wanting it because it did take that pain away to an extent. And so I want to check myself before I wreck myself because I don't want to develop a habit that is really hard to break as I have done with some other things. And even though I'm going through a lot and I feel a lot of pain, even though the temptation is to go after the thing that seemed to make it better. It's a temporary kind of feeling that I know that it ultimately, if it's used improperly and abused, it's gonna lead to death. Not necessarily physical death, but many other kinds of little deaths and ultimately would lead me down a path that is not glorifying to God. And I'll be completely honest, I wouldn't say I'm doing great I wouldn't say my faith is great. I wouldn't say my relationship with God or even with people is great. I wouldn't say anything is that great. Things have been hard and they've been hard emotionally, physically, and it's like I, I want to verbally recognize when things get better. I want to verbally give God glory when I do see his hand on things because I see it all the time. He comes through all the time. And so I, I believe in giving recognition there and I still do it, but it's like there's bigger, deeper, prolonged issues. It's hard to even pinpoint, like I can look at a couple things, but I don't want to blame those things entirely for where I'm at because life is not just a few big moments, it's a series of small moments and some big ones, but those small moments were mine and mine alone, my decisions to make, and so I can't blame anybody else and I'm tired of blaming myself as well. I'm tired of like hating myself but sometimes I feel like someone has to like because God is a God of justice and I believe that he has built us like he's built in us a need for justice like just like he's built in us a need for love, a need for peace, a need for like affection and communication like there's a whole myriad of things that we are made to desire in the godly way and so the part of me that has that godly desire for justice and doesn't know what to do with it because i'm not the judge god is the judge he's our ultimate judge it's on him to execute justice in my life the way he sees fit but because i don't know where to place the blame but i feel like someone needs to have it like someone has to take the fall for that i've been aiming it towards myself when in reality like if i if i claim to believe jesus the way that i have for like 22 years then i have to believe it that jesus did take that for me that that justice was put on him so that whatever I do or what I go through, I'm not supposed to take the blame for what I've done. I'm supposed to take responsibility for improving and surrendering to God so that he can help me and transform me. But I'm not supposed to be carrying the weight, like the shame of it. And unfortunately, I just see every little mistake that I make as further evidence against me, like further proof that I should not be loved and that I should not be successful and that I should not be healthy or clean or sober and I'm really thankful because 
you know, I was raised in a good Christian family and I wasn't around drugs, I wasn't around alcohol. There's alcohol in the house, but I never saw it abused. So there's always like a healthy relationship and my parents were really careful who they let around me, who they let in the house. But then you get older and you're free to make your own decisions and people are human and you end up loving people that are still human and can hurt you. Sometimes you're one of those people, like Alexa, a lot of times you're one of those people. I would probably guess that everybody at some point has been the biggest villain in their own life. I was really blessed to be raised with that kind of family. And so for me, I didn't really understand, especially in high school, I knew people were out partying, doing drugs, drinking, whatever, etc. And I didn't really understand it, and I didn't agree with it, but I assumed, like I knew it came from a broken place, like I assumed, and now, you know, that I'm more tempted by it, or that I'm going through a season where I feel like I'm getting every temptation possible thrown at me, like, on a level I've never been through before, and I'm actually desiring those things, and I'm struggling to fight against that. I can honestly like say that that assessment was right. It does come from a broken place because I'm not going to sit here and tell you that I'm not in a broken place and that I'm doing those things because it's fun. There's literally no other reason. If I were not feeling the way that I'm feeling, if I weren't grieving how I'm grieving, if I weren't dealing with all that warfare and all of that, I wouldn't care like I wouldn't have a desire you know what I mean because even with things that aren't necessarily like big no-nos in Christianity there are other things that we can abuse to try and get fulfillment that we can only get in God and food is one of them and so we're constantly looking for like dopamine or a high or something to numb it people like that it's easy for them to fast it's because their satisfaction and their you know, their hunger and thirst, that's being satisfied by God's so satisfaction in God. And they are able to withstand going longer periods of time without the things that our flesh normally craves. So the closer you are to God, sometimes the easier it is to fast. And sometimes as you fast, you get closer to God. It doesn't make you holier. I mean, I think it can lead to more holiness, but the act of fasting is not what makes you holy, what makes you good enough, or gets you to heaven, or anything like that. Fasting is typically easier if you have that foundation already, you have that relationship already, and it's fulfilling you. Then you're not, you know, looking for the dopamine that you get from food, or the, the hunger pains to go away. And it's not bad to enjoy things. Things are there for us to enjoy. In the Bible, it even says, like, I think it's a uh, Solomon, King Solomon, who's saying, I don't think there's anything better than for people to love God and enjoy life. I think that's it. Granted, this is Ecclesiastes where King Solomon has sinned a lot, learned a lot of lessons from it, and he is like, in my opinion, my humble opinion, I think he's grieving the person that he wishes that he was. Like, he had all this wisdom and he still felt like he needed to satisfy it with more women, more whatever, you know? Specifically more women, let's be real. <laughs> and so he's writing from like what he's learned. So there is wisdom what he's learned in the Bible says everything's for our, our teaching and uplifting. Everything in the Bible is valuable and God saw fit for it to be canon scripture for us. So I, it's definitely, definitely not wrong to enjoy stuff, but when it is an escape, a tranquilizer of sorts. When it's meant to like subdue things that God is meant to have control over and subdue, right? So like your mind, some of us, probably a lot of us, especially in this generation, have chaotic minds. We have so much information, we got you know, what what the doctors would call like chemical imbalances, you know, you got all these different diagnoses now being pushed and you have people that they just want they just want answers. They just want to 
have a way to cope with it and sometimes you cope by having an answer. So we got all these questions and all these answers and we end up just going in circles and the whole time Jesus is that answer and he's like, hey, I know who you are. If you would just come to me, I'll, I'll show you who you are. I'll teach you who you are. And it doesn't have to be the same labels. Like maybe there's a different way that he wants to approach something. Maybe there's a different thing that he calls it. I'm not saying God can't or doesn't use things like medicine. Of course he does. He wants to be the one that dictates like how you subdue your brain in which ways and what you allow to be at the forefront of your mind and what you allow to come out of your mouth and what you allow to speak to you and to identify you and all this stuff because he knows who you are. Like it's not like he is some crazy like human dictator or like alien or something that just wants to have control over you because it likes the power and it wants everyone to be who who they want it to be and do what they want it to do. He's not like that. He's actually your creator. So he's actually the one that made you. And if he made you, he knows who you are. So it's not like he is trying to make you something that you're not. He's trying to make you what you already are and what he knows that you are. And so by running from him and by running from the process he's trying to take you through and by running to substances and to drugs and, and medicine and, and all this stuff like in an unhealthy way, like in a way that is without wisdom, without borders, without wise counsel, like when you're running to those things and not to God, you are going further and further from who you actually are and who you're supposed to be. And instead you're becoming this person that is just like, this is how I'm picturing it because I can't put it in words. But I'm picturing it as like a human, but they're made up of, of these big puzzle pieces, like that big. And I'm seeing all different colors, and I'm seeing this person that has puzzle pieces everywhere, all different colors, and what I'm seeing is like cope. So all of these different pieces are from different things that they have used to cope and to keep this person together like these pieces are keeping the person in a human shape but they're not necessarily human so they're in a human shape they've got all these things that they've used to cope to keep themselves together but they're not really human they're not really who they're intended to be the bible when it talks about how god removes a heart of stone and gives us a heart of flesh so there is something godly about humanity it's not humanity is not purely sinful Humanity was originally intended to be purely godly. When he says give us a heart of flesh, he's meaning the original, like the soft, the loving kind, the kind that yields to his Holy Spirit, the kind that is patient with people, is kind to people. It's a weird sound. <sighs> Dear Jesus, I pray for whoever's in that situation, um, that you be with them and that your hand be upon the situation. Pray for peace and your love and your anointing and your provision and just for healing over anyone who's healing. And in Jesus' name, amen. For justice, amen. Godly justice, amen, amen, amen. Okay, so there are a lot of things that I have like questions about personally. But here's what I've learned and I can say this truthfully, is when you are in a good place with God, like I mean where you feel good, like where you feel his presence, where you're just like, like like basking in it in his holiness in his presence you feel that love you forget your questions like the questions go away and instead it becomes give me more of you like i just want more of you i just want more of you i just want to be right here like this is what i was made for i was made to be with you like that's what it feels like when you're in a real relationship with god and you're at a good place because you can be in relationship and go through ups and downs so when you're on that high with God, you're just like, I want more, I want more, this is who I want to be with. And even when you're at the lows, when life is dealing out bows, man, when things are getting heavy, you still have God there in some way. You still have his presence and maybe you don't feel it as much. Like right now, I don't feel it all the time, but I recognize it. There are, there are other ways to recognize. So it's like, okay, I do have some moments where it reaches my emotions where the Holy Spirit gets through my emotions and you know I'm crying and I'm not just crying 
to cry, but I'm crying because I'm having an encounter. And then I have other times, which is a lot more frequently now, where I don't feel it, where I'm struggling, where I feel like he's not answering fast enough, or he's not like revealing himself enough, or I'm not satisfied. But I can see, can see what he's done for me and what he continues to do for me. And then it's that still small voice, that small little bit of hope that he continues to give me to where I'm like, okay, maybe I want to die right now in this moment. Maybe I'm done. Maybe I feel like nothing's getting better. Maybe I don't even have words for what I'm going through. Maybe like all of this stuff that's added up has just become too confusing and too heavy. And I feel like I cannot fight whatever enemies are against me right now, even if it's myself. Like I feel like I, I can't escape myself, like whatever it is. And all of that is crushing in on me and, and so much more. And you feel like you can't function anymore. Just because you don't feel God in that moment doesn't mean that he's not there. And doesn't mean that he's not working things. And sometimes, and I, I heard this or I read this somewhere. But it was basically like, it's, I mean, it's, it's cliche, so I'm sure you've heard it too. But it works. Is, if God is right next to you, he doesn't need to shout. He doesn't. That's why he whispers. And yes, he can do things that are a little more obvious so that we can see them and we can recognize him as God. But we want to put him on our timeline when he's got his own timeline. And his timeline is considering everything that we don't even think to consider because we don't even know they exist. There's things that he's factoring in that we don't even know exist. And he's always doing it for our good. So I know these things about God. I know God is good all the time. But I've got things that I question, you know, in those moments where I'm not fully in his presence or I'm not just one-on-one -on -one encountering him, where I'm just living my daily life. And he's still there too. He's still watching. He's still around me. He's still communicating. But, you know, I have a lot of moments where I just have questions. And I'm just like, hey, this is really sad. Like, does it have to be this way? Why is it this way? That's a real human response to the broken world that we're in. And no, he didn't intend for it to be broken. And you could get into all kinds of debates about that whole thing and the Garden of Eden and the fall and whatever. It's not what I'm here to do because I don't have all the answers to everything. I don't know the why, I just know the who, you know? And that's Jesus. It has been a struggle. However, I can't be like, God is not who I, he's not the God I think he is. And Jesus isn't the way and all these things because he's not doing things how I expected, or he's not fulfilling me, or I'm not here yet, or like, I don't know why this happened, or I don't know why I'm going through this, or like, I'm, I'm having doubts, or I'm having issues, or I don't feel him, I don't see him. I can't disbelieve him just because of those kind of feelings, because feelings is what they are, they're not based in truth. And there is, there is an absolute truth, there has to be. And I know it, because I've met I've met him I've met him I've seen him I've heard him like I've had almost every experience besides visibly seeing which I know I'll get in heaven but the Bible says blessed is he who believes without seeing and that's what faith is is to believe without seeing and it's crazy because people can have so much faith for what they want and whatever like oh yeah I got dreams and I have faith in my dreams and I believe in myself and you believe in what you can't even see yet but when it comes to God it's like, no, why would I believe in that? Why would I believe in that? And probably because it doesn't always tickle your fancy. And it doesn't do what you want it to do. And the whole point of God and the gospel and the Bible is not to satisfy fleshly desires and is not to do what humans want. It's not our world. We didn't make the world. God made the world and gave us dominion over it. So he still has authority and he still has a final say. And he's still saying, hey, I gave you this, but there are rules. If you want to live here, there's rules. And get this, we still live here when we break the rules. We're still here to get to, to the other place, to heaven. There is a prerequisite, something that we have to do to get there. And that is make Jesus our Lord and Savior and emphasis on Lord because many people want the Savior, they don't want the Lord. Because the Lord is describing someone who is over you, has authority over you, is lording over you. But he's not no 
Kim Jong Un, he's not a dictator. He's not insecure, because let's be real, dictatorship, Napoleon complex, that comes from insecurity. So, <laughs> these people that they're high and mighty and they gotta exert their power and they gotta have these, these, you know, big punishments and consequences to things, they're insecure. They're insecure. God is not insecure. He knows he's the all powerful God. So, that is why he is slow and he's patient with us so that we can repent and turn from our sin because he's not insecure he doesn't have to prove anything and here's the argument for people that are like well this is a broken world how can god exist when all this stuff is happening he's not doing anything about it he didn't do it people did it the devil's doing it the demons are doing it like the evil that's broken out into the world like we're doing it and you've heard that before that's not new i'm not giving you some big revelation like it's pretty christian is to say that humans are the ones doing the sinning but the reason why we don't see justice quickly or why it, it seems like evil's just running amok is because god is patient so you know if you want to be forgiven and you want god to overlook the mistakes that you make or the wrong that you do you should want that for other people but the problem is that we want to choose what god forgives and what he doesn't so we want to go okay well i just you know smoke a little i drink a little i sleep around a little i shouldn't go to hell because there's reasons i do this or like it shouldn't be wrong it should like love is love i should be able to date whoever i want and and marry whoever i want and blah 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 right that's in your eyes but to you you draw the line at murder or you draw the line at rape or incest or bestiality or wherever you draw the line that's not so with god because we all have different versions of what we think should be right or wrong or legal or not legal god just has his objective truth his system the way that he made it and because he is perfect in him there is no darkness at all he's made a perfect system if we were to actually abide by it and so the fact that he sent Jesus to like die for all the sins, no matter what sin it is, no matter how bad it is, that shows his grace, his mercy, his loving kindness, and his perfection, his ultimate authority, his wisdom, like all of it. Like imagine you're, you're trying to look at someone that is doing all kinds of evil and go, man, they should not go to heaven, like they should go to hell. And meanwhile, someone be looking at you going, oh my gosh, like, you see what they did? They don't deserve heaven. They're not real Christian. They must not know the Lord or they need Jesus or whatever. You got people looking at you that way too, for whatever reason. Even if you are a super great Christian, they're going to look at you like you're prideful, like you're religious, like you're a fake, like you're a phony, all that stuff. There's always going to be someone that has an opinion about it. But God sees everything objectively and with emotion. So, because God, we're made in his image, God has emotions too. So he sees the objective truth, because he, he knows what truth is, he made it. He, he sees all the thoughts and all the hearts of mankind. So he knows that truth, but yet he feels what we feel. And he's sad when we're sad. And he's joyful when we're joyful. And he sent Jesus to be on the cross, to experience like one of the worst pains that you could experience so that the things about us that were not from God, that were not originally given to us by God could be redeemed and could be put back in order the way they were supposed to be and that we would have a chance at heaven. And so it's not by might, not by power, but by the Holy Spirit. That's what the Bible says. And it's also not through works, but it's through faith. It's by faith and grace. I just felt randomly like filming, so, so I'm filming. And I'm just being honest. I have not wanted to film. I have not wanted to even really be around people because of how broken that I felt and how, like, not sure of who I am. Like, I don't even know who I am. And I don't know what's going on. And the exhaustion that I feel after trying to figure out what's going on, how I've been unsatisfied with the answers that God's given me. By unsatisfied, I mean that when he actually talks to me and I know it's him, there's such an unexplainable peace. There's a, there's just like a, oh, like a river of peace in that moment. And like I said, the questions go out the window and you're just satisfied. And you're just like, okay, you're taking care of it. Why am I worried? You're taking care of it. Everything's gonna be fine. I won't go into detail on this, but I'm talking about like major, not like, you know, how am I gonna pay rent? Like, how am I gonna get this? Or like, I, I'm i disappointed about this. Like, and those are, those are serious issues, but I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about like deep, 
philosophical like spiritual like what is going on type of questions like and the reason I don't get into this is because I, I people are people they're gonna be people they're gonna misunderstand you no matter how much you explain and I just it kind of just exhausts me all the time so rather than do that I'm just gonna say speak as I'm led to speak and then speak in a way where I'm being honest but people can relate to it and they're not overwhelmed by whatever I'm saying like they can take it as it is they can relate to it in their own way so I'm leaving it right there for now okay but just just all, all these questions I've had and all these struggles I've had they really do disappear when you encounter God but sometimes I, I can't I, I can't lie I don't I don't want to lie you know I've, I've been seeing a lot of people getting saved and they're on fire for God and you know they've been saved in the last few years and so now they're like completely turning their life around doing amazing things for God's kingdom they're like never going back like joyful all this stuff and I love it I'm celebrating that 100% I'm backing it I'm praying for them like you guys are awesome and you're doing way more than I'm doing honestly you are so like I'm I'm so incredibly proud of you like way to go no no beef there but just what I'm going through just just me personally is I was you know I've been raised in church in and good in good churches I've seen good and bad stuff in church I have had a personal relationship with Jesus and it's been fantastic I've seen miracles I've been freed I've been healed I've been delivered I've been through all that kind of stuff I've had you know slow processes I've had instant processes I've had what I feel like is almost everything under the sun however I know that there's always more with God but where I'm at right now is even after going through all those things, I'm in a place now where the pushback and the warfare and whatever I've been going through at whatever level I'm at has been so heavy, has been so incessant, has been so strategic that it has shaken me. Like it has shaken me and it has made me lose sight of what's important and of who I am and of what my values are. Because I just stopped being able to cope. If I'm being completely honest, I could not cope anymore. I can't cope anymore. And so I just want to be honest about the fact that that is a reality too in Christianity. It's not like you give your life to Jesus and then everything's great and you're always going to be on fire. I hope you are always on fire. I hope, I believe it's possible because I believe, you know, like Paul, when he became a Christian, there was no going back and yes he talks about struggles and so and he wasn't perfect either but he also like you never see his fire go out like he was in it he was in it he was there to run his race he loved 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 the lord so i believe it's possible but to say that or we don't go through serious problems and serious pushback when we are promoting the kingdom of god and even when we're not, the devil is out to still kill and destroy everybody. He doesn't care whether you love Jesus or not. Yes, he's going to go after people who are with Jesus because he's trying to get them away. But he's also going to look at people that he sees are interested in Jesus in whatever level. And he's going to do whatever he can to keep you uninterested. So people that are like devout atheists, he is targeting the ideals and the things and the information that continues to build on that atheism. So he is using strategies, because he's not dumb and he's not uninformed, so he's using strategies to target that, to keep you away from God. And for the people that do believe in God, that maybe they could never not believe in God, like for me, I know he targets that specifically. Like if I love God, he's gonna target the areas that will cause pride and cause religion and cause hyper spirituality or overthinking or like guilt, shame, condemnation, whatever it is, there's always gonna be something. So he will manipulate and target things that he knows he can get to me through. That being said, God is more powerful and I've given Jesus my life. Even when I struggle, even when I do what I'm not supposed to do, I have given Jesus my life. God has my life, he has my life. And 
if he has my life, I don't have to worry about who's coming to take my life or who's against my life or who's doing witchcraft on my life. I don't have to worry about that because it's rebuked and it's broken in Jesus' name. He's got it. He's got it, guys. Seriously. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. This might be a long video. I have not just sat down and talked like this for a while. I guess the conclusion is this. It's not like this was a secret, but I'm not a perfect human. <laughs> I am not, I am not. I'm not. And I'm not just saying, oh, I took a few sips of alcohol, I'm not perfect, oh my god, like, no. But if I told you things that I have done or do or whatever, or my struggles, if I, if I got into it, man, ooh, I don't want to do that. <laughs> That's for certain people, okay? The ones who are ordained to love me, pray for me, help me. They can see the dirty stuff, not not everybody gets to see it, okay? I am gonna be picky about what I share on here because that's just wise, <laughs> okay? And God sees it and he knows and he's helping me. But in conclusion, I'm not perfect and this world isn't perfect, this life isn't perfect. It is hard. The only, the only perfect thing, you know it, it's God, it's God. It's Jesus. It is Dios. It's perfecto. Anyways, but just so you know, I don't cry for attention. I don't cry for views. If I wanted more views, I would be putting, what do you call it? Those captions that are like meant to get people to watch. Oh, clickbait, okay? If I wanted views for the sake of getting views, I would be putting clickbait titles in these videos, which if you've noticed, I do not do that. I just say it as it is. So, one more thing before I go. A good story, a good story, and one of the reasons why I know and believe God exists and am relearning how to hear the Holy Spirit better. So I'm at the airport, right? And I have a little bit of time before my flight. I went to go see my gate, and then once I found where my gate was, I was like, okay, I can go use the bathroom again. So I was gonna go to the nearest one, because there was one nearest my gate, and there was one that was a lot further down. And I was about to go to that one, but then I was like, you know what? I think I'm gonna go to the further one. I got a little bit more time. It's a bigger bathroom, it's nicer. Like, I think I wanna go to that one. And the stall that I go into has a phone in it. And I'm like, okay. And so I take it out, and I'm like, yo, it's anyone's phone. It's no one's phone. And so I take it out into the, you know, outside the bathroom. I'm looking around, and I ask some, like, retail workers at one of the shops, where can I take this? Someone left their phone. So they're like, oh, if you go here, there's a phone you can call. Like, it's got numbers on it. You can call Lost and Found. So I'm like, okay. So I go. Like, I don't know why they couldn't just take the phone, but I don't understand how their jobs work, so I'm not going to be mad about it. So I go and I call the number and of course it's not a real person. It's like a voicemail. It's like press this number for this and press this number for that. And there's no options really for what I needed. But I click a number and it takes me to yet another voicemail. And it does this like three or four times. And at this point I'm like okay I don't think I'm going to talk to a human being anytime soon. And I'm, I need to catch my flight because by this time we're about to board. I was like, okay, I'll just find a security officer and I'll give them the phone. So I look around and I see two, but there's one in, one woman in particular. And I just felt like, like, like and, and when I say feel, I don't mean like this big, like, oh, I sense I need to go here. Like this big feeling is really small. It's really small and often I can't even recognize it till after it happens. But there's just this like... Yes, that one. I go to talk to her and give her the phone and before I get there, another lady gets there before me and I hear her saying something like, have you seen my, and I hear what I think is the word phone. I can't fully hear, but I think. I was just like, it's, it's, it's gonna be. And as she starts to walk away, the security guard's like, no. I stop her 
like because I'm right there at this point so they're right there like before she can leave I stop her and I say hey what are you looking for she immediately looks and she goes that's my phone and she's so happy and she gives me like the biggest hug ever like 50 hugs she kept hugging me and she was like god bless you like I had everything on my ticket was on this like everything I needed was on this and she was just like overwhelmed like to the point of tears and was so happy and she was like what's your name and was just like so thankful and I just I felt like so much joy so much satisfaction like being able to help somebody and not of anything that I did God put me in those places I didn't know that he was taking me to that bathroom or that he was taking me to that woman but he was so he just without having to to speak audibly without having to give me this overwhelming feeling of like like because I wasn't anxious about it because I wasn't living like I have been a lot recently where I've been like God what do you want me to do right now what do I need to do right now what do I do right now I was just following the plan that I already knew to follow which is was to go to the bathroom to get on my flight that was my plan that I knew to follow that had been laid out already because I was already doing that and I wasn't obsessing over okay what do I do this second and what do I do now and should plans change or should I do this instead I was just living I was just doing my thing because I wasn't anxious I was able to get to the places that God had already ordained that he already knew I would show up at he'd already worked it together and he made sure that me and that woman went to the same security guard it was awesome and I felt so good it was the best. And then not only that, but we ended up going to the same place and without no without knowing. And then I got there and I was walking to my car, my ride that was there to get me. And she stopped me and she goes, Ali, is that you? And she's all excited and gives me like two more hugs. <coughs> Go watch school first. The Glowfless vlog, vlog. The Glowfless vlog. The Glowfless vlog. Go watch Glow. Go watch. Go watch the Glowfest vlog. It's really hard to say because it was lit. Pun intended. Because it's like glow and like whatever, whatever, whatever. Go watch that vlog because it was a great time and you'll get to see some amazing rappers and some amazing random people that I met. So go ahead and watch that and then tell me what you like, what you don't like because I've been doing YouTube for years but I have not really stepped out of my comfort zone as far as talking to other people, interviewing them, making those kind of connections because it's still my voice and me that has to ask the questions and me that has to do stuff and sometimes I'm just like, I can't do it, it's too hard, I'm scared. So anyways, pray for me. Thank you for watching. My name is Ali Anderson, spelled S-E-N at the end. This has been a random video of talking, a vlog, vlogging. Ah.